I think I generally hate video essays, or at least the ones that focus on analyzing films. I haven't watched any in a while, but back when I stumbled across any, I cringed the fuck out before I could make it even halfway through any one of them. And yeah, I know, aren't I a hypocrite in this case? Well, first of all, I'm not against the concept of video essays in general. I mean, I make them myself, so why the hell would I contribute to something I don't approve of? I guess I just hate the idea of straight up explaining art. I hate how so many interpretations lack the heart behind every claim, as if missing the genuine feeling of having experienced the film, instead externally overcompensating by meticulously taking apart each frame or bit of dialogue, for the sake of specific contextualization separated from any hint of internal perception, in the fashion of a pretentious student, basically. I don't want to be associated with that, especially as I purposefully avoid digging in deeper than I have to in order to get my points across. So I don't consider my video essays to be strictly analytical, or to be strictly anything, in fact. I prioritize personal reflections without confining myself into a set formula, just letting loose with how I express myself. So, uh, yeah, why did I go on that tangent just now? Oh yeah, because I just want to gush about this film like I do with pretty much all the films on my channel. But I guess I just wanted to get that off my chest, because I really value public identity alongside artistic integrity. As you can tell, I think, I hope. Anyway, Nocturnal Animals bit me in just the right spot, at just the right time. But I feel like that happens with most of my favorite films, and I feel like I say that every single time I cover one of those films, so I'm, I'm probably just being repetitive again. Regardless, the personal pain that seeps through each visible and invisible layer alike feels so rightfully passionate that I actually feel enticed to reinforce how much I appreciate each one of those bites. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm... Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I just, um... I thought I saw someone. You're the one. I know you. <laughs> So many theoretical as well as literal similarities serve as an enhancement to the feelings I felt so intensely, sharing in the experience, and the pain especially, while also feeling a sense of cathartic release simply by being understood, and represented too, in a certain sense. I don't know what it is with Jake Gyllenhaal starring in these haunting arthouse endeavors that happen to reach me at just the right time, but hey, I'm, I'm grateful. <laughs> I also felt grateful for Michael Shannon wholeheartedly embracing another side but unquestionably worthwhile role, creating yet another rewarding subplot that I purposefully didn't dig into for obvious reasons. Although maybe my reasons aren't as obvious, considering my loose approach to some rather tight reflections. In regards to the personal input, the more you bring in, the more you'll bring out as is usually the case with films that deal with such universal emotions. The film itself, however, certainly takes a solid stand with everything it covers, rendering itself as an objective success in my subjective eyes, seeing how impressively it stumps along the ground of generally impressive filmmaking while confidently exploring the off-kilter themes and morals. In the end, a very loud yet distinctive morality tale is formed packed with enough empathy in spite of the ferocious vision guiding the agonized boys. 
So whether personal baggage is taken along for the ride or not does not determine the overall quality of the objectively impressive craft, but it does add an additional layer of individual satisfaction on top of the virtually perfect viewing experience. That tangent at the beginning actually aligns pretty well with one of the background themes of nocturnal animals. Art without the inner soul or personality will eventually end up as metaphorical trash, either by being irreversibly irrelevant or just simply forgettable, although those outcomes become essentially synonymous in the long term run. Amy Adams' character is clearly outlined as the scrupulous type, for better or worse. Noticing nuances of every step and misstep alike, automatically setting somewhat of a standard for anyone around, without ever doing so for herself, as far as I can tell, at least in the aspects that matter in that long-term run. Therefore, when those arrogantly ignorant shortcomings of hers come to bite her in the ass, either directly or indirectly, she falls into the seemingly benevolent but ultimately toxic cycle of guilty persistence. My ex-husband used to call me a nocturnal animal. It's weird, I've been thinking about him a lot lately and then recently he sent me this book that he's written and it's... violent and it's sad and he titled it Nocturnal Animals and he dedicated it to me. Did you love him? Yeah, I loved him. He was a writer, and uh, I didn't have faith in him. I panicked and I did something horrible to him, something unforgivable, really. You left him? I left him. I left him in a brutal way. Do you ever feel like your life has turned into something you never intended? Notice how I'm referring to this as guilty persistence, rather than persistence fueled by guilt? That's because the persistence itself encapsulates guilt. Consciously choosing to persist with something you know you feel guilty about only reaffirms the initial case of feeling guilty being in place, having it function as a motivator in this stage, while the mere act of persistence piles on as another layer of guilt. Hopefully that doesn't come across as repetitive rambling. Although I guess most of my video essays are exactly that from a certain perspective.